right, so getting right into it here, guys. This is the shipping box that you will receive. It's a branded shipping box, as you can see. It has a KD Collectibles logo on it. It comes with four plastic corner protectors on the, the top and the bottom, so eight total. The overall weight labeled on the uh, shipping, the packing slip, is 12 kilograms, which is you know just under 30 pounds uh, for us here in the States. And just to give you some idea of the scale for this, uh, there's one standard banana there used uh, for scale and a rob for scale. Twenty nine inches long. Just under twelve inches in the height. And just about twenty two inches wide. All right, so once you unbox it. You will see it actually comes with a fully custom art box inside it, within the art box protected with, again, eight of these, one for each corner. And this is the front of the art box. It has a KD Collectibles logo on it. There is the top of the art box. Great image of the statue itself. All right, and on this end of the art box, it actually has a uh, strip from the manga. So that is also very cool. And then this right here is the backside of the art box. The Vegetaverse C19. Reads, Vegeta ascends to Super Saiyan by making a mockery of the stunned Android 19. This statue represents Vegeta in all his badass glory, and indeed it does. The limited edi edition, designed by Roy Ugang, sorry if I mispronounce your name, Roy, and KD Collective. And then finally, the other end of it, so on the left and right side, there are strips from the manga on each side, which depicts the iconic scene from both the anime and the manga of which this statue is uh, representing. Nothing very exciting on the bottom of it, just more of the kind of abstract design that it had going around the rest of the box. As the background is also printed on the bottom of the box. All right, now opening the box, there's just two little cardboard inserts here. And then the lid just pops open and it says, let me ask you, does a machine like yourself experience fear? Which is the line that Vegeta says to Android 19 as he is destroying him. Once fully opened, you will see that there is a essentially a full box of foam packaging, which all the statues and pieces are uh, individually assorted within. All right, so this is pretty much the, everything that, was, that you would see internally. The big round circle part over there is where um, just the base would be. And then down here, there's two spots here that's for each head would uh, each head. If you got both the additional heads, they were packed in there. Then uh, uh, Vegeta was over down by that bubble wrap section, and then Android 19 was down on this one. And then miscellaneous other accessories, uh, just part of the base and everything, were kind of just staged around with it. So this is everything that comes inside of the box itself. Everything that comes with the statue here: two heads, Android 19, one solid sculpt. Vegeta, one solid sculpt minus the alternative heads. These little cloud pieces, um, those attach in there. I'll show you that here in just a moment. That large one is built into the base, and it came with a painting here of the statue itself by the sculptor and artist and designer of the piece. And this one actually came with two COAs. So it comes with this COA. It says Vegeta vs. C19, 1 6 for 1 6 scale, KD Collectibles, number 38. And then on the back, this KD Collectibles is proud to present you our diorama of Vegeta versus Android 19. This card symbolizes an authentic product brought to you by KD Collectibles and associated partners. Then the second COA comes with this edition. This one's actually made of metal. So I don't know if you could hear that, but this one's actually made of metal, as you can tell by its uh, kind of how reflective it is. Uh, it says Vegeta versus C19, KD Collectibles number 3816. On the back, as you can see, it has a Dragon Ball Collectors Dragon Ball Collectors United logo, which was uh, one of the groups that uh, commissioned this particular model that came with uh, LED lighting. So that's the only difference in the LED lighting. I'll get into it a little bit later in the video, um, but it's only in the little section of his hands right here on Android 19. They just light up red. That's the only part of it that has any sort of LED feature to it. Uh, there's nothing in the base or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, this is everything that comes in the package uh, in its individual pieces. Now let's get into the assembly process of this statue here, starting with the base. 
Um, and just a reminder, I will get into much more of uh, like go over the whole statue in much more detail and kind of go over a whole review of everything once it is fully assembled. But right now, I'm just focusing on the assembly of this statue and just going over all of that process. So don't worry if you think I'm just not moving kind of too quick through it or anything like that, because there will be a much detailed, you know, review process with high res images and video of the piece once it is all assembled and put together. So that being said, the assembly process is fairly simple. All of these pieces, the smoke pieces, just come with a little metal, uh, little metal peg and they just stick into the ones that fit. So they all have a squared, uh, you know, edge design on there cast with the resin. And you just pretty much stick them where they fit. They only fit in one section. This right here is the plate for uh, Android 19's foot. And then his other foot, you can see, goes here. And it actually has a metal peg in it. So let's get started. Now, I said it was very easy to put together because they only fit in certain ones, but obviously, if the piece is a little bit smaller, it'll fit into one that's not necessarily supposed to. So, and like I said, don't worry, we're going to take another look at it. Uh, I got some high res images and everything to actually go over and break down during the review process. But that being said, like this is uh, the assembly process for the base itself. And this is, you know, that's really it. It's, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, that's it. And uh, I didn't mention before, but obviously there is a, this is a non-detachable Dragon Ball Z logo. So it's just uh, fitted on there. And then also you will see towards the back here, I did mention that this one does have an LED feature. So the power switch is right there for it and it takes an AC power adapter right there as well. And it did come with an AC power adapter for it. Uh, we'll go over the the lighting effect that it has on it uh, later down in the review. All right, guys, so real quickly, I will show you without Vegeta attached because uh, you have a little bit of effort in getting Vegeta actually inside of Android 19. Because um, you can see here, I'll get him on the, the post or the, the base here. Android 19 will slip into the base relatively easily, just like that. So once you pop him in there, you're essentially done. Now, the thing is, with Vegeta, his body. It will just go in right here, okay? So it just slips in there, but as you can see, it doesn't fit in, like, just by gliding in. You do have to, like, kind of pull apart the legs, like, slightly just to get them in there, and I don't want to do it from this angle because I don't want to risk breaking anything on it. There we go. So if yours is a bit easier to move, kind of like mine is, you can probably use a method just as that, where I just came at it from behind, so I could kind of hold right here on the base. I even did this on this wobbly thing, so it wasn't all that difficult. It's just a little, it takes a little bit of finessing to get them in, but I just had them from this angle, pulled apart a little bit. Once the metal pegs were inside, you could kind of push against the back of Android 19 and kind of just gracefully slide them in. And then that right there will give you to the last assembly piece, the head sculpt. All right, and the head is very easy to put in. As you can see here, there are two different heads. Let me try to get them each in frame for you. And I'll start with the original head sculpt, okay? So this, the one that has more hair, I'm gonna hold them back up just so you can see again. The one you can tell the difference uh, is the hair, more so than anything, the size of the hair, right? So the one with the crazy hair here was the original design and sculpt. So what ended up happening was they released KD Collectibles. They released the design and everything in the first uh, cast of the, the piece. And a lot of people, they weren't necessarily complaining by any means, but they did not believe that the head sculpt itself was as accurate as it should be to um, to the show and the manga. 
So what they did was they created the second head here. So as you can see here, both of them side by side. The differences, they, a lot of people uh, did not, they thought his face sculpt was a little off um, and looked a bit like too menacing, I guess, from what he looked like in the comic or in the, in the manga and in the show. So they made, and I think the main thing though that they addressed was the hair. A lot of people weren't like too happy with the hair sculpt necessarily. But the thing of it is, and I'm not gonna lie, I, I actually had the same kind of thoughts as uh, time went on and they were showing the designs of the second additional head sculpt that you was an optional purchase. Once they started releasing the designs of this one and showing the differences, it did seem much more, you know, accurate to Vegeta in the show and his hair in particular and everything. So let me just get a quick look here for you in the back. Now, when it comes to popping these heads in, incredibly simple, metal peg, pops right in effortlessly, and there it is. So that is with the original head sculpt, the entire fully assembled piece. With that being said, guys, let's take a better look at this and give this a full breakdown and review. Alright everyone, let's get into the review of this piece, the Vegeta uh, versus C19 or Android 19 by KD Collectibles. I also have Rick Metz here with me. We're going to go over it here together. Um, give me one second. Look at that. There we go. That's it. So we're going to break this thing down and uh, I own this piece so I thought it would be good to have Rick on here so as kind of like an impartial third party. Because uh, I'm obviously going to be a little bit biased to it because I was willing to spend the money on it. <laughs> so I might think it's a little bit better than, uh, you know, than other people might. So Rick's going to give his thoughts on it. I'm going to give my thoughts on it and break it down. Real quick, guys, before we get into the review, I just wanted to invite you to check out the other content on our channel. Rick and I do a weekly show where we talk about movies and movie news and comic books, you know, things like that, all sorts of fun stuff, nerdy stuff for the most part. Uh, we even take viewer submitted questions and topics that uh, we, we will address on the show. Uh, you can submit those just by emailing us at honestanduneducated at gmail.com. That's honestanduneducated at gmail.com. So please check it out if you're into that sort of stuff. You can click right here to watch our latest episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video and let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And with all that down and out of the way, let's get back to the review. First, while this is up here on this angle, I wanted to say the dimensions on this thing is from this smoke part, the one that's built in here, to across to where Vegeta's head comes out, um, it's about 16 inches uh, wide there. So the, the base itself kind of comes in. Uh, since it's circular, they have some things that you know stick out, some of the smoke stuff. So it's about 16 inches in diameter. Just uh, you kind of got a lot for... The, the smoke and everything. So, but but from smoke to Vegeta's head, that also protrudes out a little bit. That's about 16 inches. So that's crazy. Bear that in mind if you were to pl plan on getting this, because it, it is just a six scale, so it's not going to be as big as like a fourth scale figure or anything. But uh, it's still pretty big, all things considered. And then from the height uh, to the highest point on it is just under like 13 inches. So it's a fairly big piece, and it's got some weight to it. Like I said during the unboxing, it was uh, about 26 pounds, 12 kilograms. So when it's out of the packaging and all assembled here, it's it's just around the 20-pound mark. So it's a, it's a pretty heavy piece. It's got some weight to it. And uh, the good thing is, like, there's a... Uh, let me show you here. Like, 
A lot of people were concerned with like Vegeta hanging like this. That's what I was going to say. So the thing is like, and you saw this during the unboxing, like he, he just fits in with metal pegs, but he fits into the face portion of uh, Android 19 right there, just with uh, some metal pegs that go in. But a lot of people, obviously, with this angle, if you had any, like, PVC or even just a resin, like, piece uh, over time, because I had this with a couple, like, just six-inch action figures and some weapons, like, over time, if it's a heavy weapon, the gravity will warp it. Yeah. So a lot of people were concerned about Vegeta, like, warping in the same capacity with... Uh, I don't know why it's so stuttery. Um, but anyway, uh, they had, had some concern, right? So KD Collectibles came out and said uh, like, not to worry about any of that because the metal pegs that come out of his feet, he, uh, they, they extend up to like the full skeleton of Vegeta. So like Vegeta has an entire like metal skeleton that essentially has this, me this metal pole skeleton that goes through him that the resin was casted over. Look at those quads. So he would be, I think he's Jack, dude. And he's Jack. So yeah. you, you would never have to worry about uh, like any sort of warping due to gravity because the metal pegs or the metal skeleton that is inside of him is going to prevent any sort of, uh, just any sort of warping due to gravity. It's going to maintain a structure. It's very sturdy. And uh, the same goes for, uh, like Android 19. So, I mean, he he's super solid. It's all one cast, so you don't have to worry about, uh, like, a lot of things have, like, multiple pieces put on it. Why is this so choppy? I don't like that this is playing choppy. And what does that deal with it? Uh, but this is a good shot of the base, and that's the one thing uh, I actually do really appreciate with this piece, is they put a hell of a lot of detail into, like, just small things like the dirt here. Like, it yeah. looks super, super realistic. That smoke is crazy, Yeah, too. the smoke looks good. Um, one thing uh, I did touch on, and we'll see here once I bring up some high-res images, there, uh, there is an LED feature on here, but it only affects... It's only in Android 19's arms where they get ripped off. They just glow red. And uh, I got some pictures of that to bring up as well. And uh, it would have been cool. A lot of pieces uh, have, like... LED effects in the base, like my uh, Goku Black piece has a, a super cool LED feature that makes a whole aura gl glow, and you can go and check out the review of that video on the channel here as well. And that piece looks good, and I, I could see maybe it, it kind of, it maybe would have been a nice aesthetic since they went through the whole hassle of putting the LED feature in this piece, that they could have maybe put some lights in the smoke. I think that may have been... That would have been cool. That probably would have been cool, but we'll we'll take a look here at some of the just some high res images of uh, the piece, and just so you can get an idea of the texture of it. Um, as you can see, even the the pants have a, a ton of detailing on them by themselves. You they see look the like fabric. Here. Yeah, yeah. They even gave like you know some some fabric texture to it, so it wasn't just some plain, you know, single coat of uh, just paint on it. Like they actually put like texture and detailing into these pieces, which is. Like really nicely, like you can see like just it, little tiny things in the the weaving of the fabric. So like, and that's just it's great, honestly. Like the paint job on this thing really is phenomenal. Like, and, and the sculpt and just like even the belt, I mean, yeah, the yeah. belt, the detailing in the belt, it all looks great. And like, I I got lucky on this one too. Like, I have not seen any sort of paint blemishes or like any like. Is that Hmm. Is that typically common, seeing those kinds of blemishes? Well, they're all hand-painted. Oh, okay. So a lot of the times you can have, like, issues where, kind of like when you're painting anything, you can push on the brush too hard, yeah. and you'll get, like, a little just kind of, like, splatter there or something. Or, and a lot of times, since these are uh, cast in resin, you can see some, like, deformities, if you will, like, little dents where they were touched before the resin, like, was fully hardened or something. Yeah. Like, you can see that, like, sometimes, but normally they, they at least with the all the resin pieces that I have, I haven't had any problems, like, really like that at all. And if there is, it's it's completely unnoticeable to me. I haven't, I mean, I've got a ton of pictures of this thing high res. I've looked the thing over, and I can't find anything on it. I mean, like, I mean, even like this, the detailing and like the, the, 
the different tones uh just here just just to give the effect of it being like a wrinkled shirt i mean it all looks great like yeah. like texture alone with it like it looks just fantastic and uh they did a good job with like the the poofy parts of his shirt it, even has poofy. a it has a different you texture. You can see the individual fibers yeah. of like the shirt woven together. That's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Like this thing, these these pieces, like they're phenomenal. I mean, they're expensive. Um, you get what you th pay for, though. Yeah, you definitely. If you're a fan of like Dragon Ball Z and a fan of this like scene from Dragon Ball Z in particular, like you definitely get your money's worth. Like if you're a collector in general and like you like having these high premium, high end premium format statues, they're incredible. Like this is an incredible piece. Like even like this wiring, that's, I know uh, a lot of people in shipping had these break because they are just like, just like resin. They're just like, like plastic little pieces. They almost feel like, and like they're very thin and you, know, you could like, it's, Really common as some of them would break. This is where the LED feature is, and I actually had a piece of uh, tissue paper in here from the packaging that was still in there when I took the photo, so I'm sorry about that. But this is where it will light up red, and I have a picture of that here coming up. But uh, even just the detailing of just inside of there looks great. Like, yeah, even the wires, just yeah. like the amount of detail they did with the paintwork. Oh, yeah, even like, yeah, the paint job on it and everything, just showing some like wear tear, like almost like oil, like for, yeah. for the black, you know, it's good. And then Vegeta had the that's, same attention to detail. That's the first time I've ever seen texture in Vegeta's, like, outfit. Like, it yeah. looks very real. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's one thing that, like, that level of, like, care and detailing in it is, I think, what really sets these these kind of statues apart from a lot of other ones. Especially the cheaper ones. They're not going to get this kind of detailing in yeah. But, like, they just did a phenomenal job, like, making it one look realistic and also keeping the like the spirit of the manga and the spirit of the show because i mean it is an anime piece but like i feel like with this one in particular it almost like it's like a vegeta like that exists in the real world. that's what you it, know what i mean yeah. that's it it seems like a real world if, if vegeta was real this is what he would look like look at those and delts I mean, oh my god i mean yeah, he's super jacked obviously but i mean yeah the texturing like, like you said, man, it's, it's, it great. looks like actual fabric. Yeah. And, and like the same level of like detail and care went into the chest piece. Like you can tell it's, you know, it's supposed to be armor. So it's like not, it's it, weathered. There's yeah. different colorations mm -hmm. and yeah. And you see there, you can see hand painted right here, right? You see how the white kind of bled over into yeah. the strap. That's the first I've noticed that. And like, so I guess if anything, if you wanted to call any sort of like blemish or anything like there it is, I see only air. I've come across on not that's just by virtue of doing a hand painted job. So I mean, yeah, I mean, there's I don't really very minor. Yeah, I, I don't really consider that a flaw. I mean, it, it technically speaking, if you want to be critical, yes, it is a flaw. But <laughs> amongst the collector community, yeah. yeah. But I mean, in the end, like it's 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 nothing that uh, even the depth on his face and his eyes and just mm -hmm. it's, it's great. It's in, it's in, it's it's great. And then the white of him is like very accurate to like how pasty white he was in the, yeah it's not like a show. perfect white yeah. Guess. yeah and like just some, some more detailing and weathering around here like they they the the painters did a phenomenal job with this stuff they in really my did. opinion and then like the sculpt just like all the individual wrinkles man like you see how, like that's it looks like fabric. incredible like just just that's the thing like they did not need to go out of their way to put like all the effort into getting these like wrinkles and stuff, they could have made it much because they put a lot of them in there. You like, can see it, it stretching over like the muscle. Yeah, even, exactly. Just... And like it all makes sense too. Like the the fluidity of like how he's flexing and the position he's in, like all the like wrinkles under there, they, it actually does make sense. Like they, that they would be there. Yeah. Because but they did not have to go out of their way to like add like this sort of like you know, this wrinkle here and like put sh like that different, you know, the black there for like shadowing, like and even the wrinkles in the like armpit area. Yeah. Like that, that's the kind of stuff that's like, I don't know. Like it's, it's that level of detail that like you, you definitely want to see when you're forking over and, you know, like $600 or something, mm -hmm. and which is a fairly reasonable price for, for something like a two, a two character diorama like this, especially one with it being in such a unique action pose. As opposed to just like there's there's a lot of four scale figures 
they'll be of similar quality from like Prime One or Sideshow Collectibles or something that you'll spend eight nine hundred dollars on, but it's more of a museum style pose with one character, yeah. as opposed to this being you know a diorama action scene, a very dynamic and unique pose, like. They they really Katie killed it with this piece, in my opinion. Yeah, they, they absolutely killed it. And like, it's just there's an aerial shot here, and, I, and this is with the original head sculpt on as well, with the hair coming out. And like I was telling you earlier, Rick, uh, off camera. Yeah. And I, I mentioned it before in the unboxing, I believe. Like, initially, a lot of people didn't like the fact that the, it seemed like he had too much hair, and they didn't think the face sculpt was as accurate as it could be to the comic and the manga. But once you have it in person. I'm telling you that head sculpt looks so much better on there, and to me, it like it actually does look more accurate. Like, I don't know, it's weird to say because, like, yeah, you're like, and when when you compare the size of them, like you saw in the unboxing, like they're they're very. I have a picture of it too, but there there's a lot more hair on this one, like, and it may seem like it's like too much, but I think it works like amazingly well. Like even like the earring on there, yeah. like the detailing that's in his head too. Like, I should have got a better picture of this, um, but like the internals and everything, like all like you know individually painted onto there. Yeah. Like depth to it and like shadowing on like where all this stuff's like screwed into him. Like the wrinkles on his his jowls and stuff. His jowls. His jowls. <laughs> like it all looks just phenomenal. Like, so I mean, it's a good looking piece. Like if uh you're any fan of Dragon Ball Z, like, if you can get your hands on this, I'm not sure what they're going for right now when, like, aftermarket, obviously, these have been out of production for, like, a year or so. Uh, but if you can ever get your hands on one, it's, it's good. Well, you know, one thing I was going to mention, too, just from my experience, uh, as I mentioned, I think, in our first video, I really like building Gundams, and uh, the amount of attention to detail detailing, weathering, all that sort of stuff you have to put into it. I can respect how much work was put into that paint job because that is not easy. Oh, yeah. And uh, especially to make it, you know, pull it off that well. I think uh, that's really, really cool. Oh, yeah, and they had to do it like 600 times, three or 600 times. I forget how many were in this in this run. Yeah. But there were only three or 600 of them made. 300 or 600. I want to stay with 600. Um, but yeah, they had to do it over and over again. And even in like the the hair... Like they, they had it like fade into like you know a whiter and a lighter yellow, and they add some yeah, it's white not just highlights. Yellow. Yeah, like they they did a fucking, they did a great job, dude. I mean, even like even with his body sculpt, like Vegeta's being like I said, like a much more like kind of like a realistic. I don't know, it feels like Vegeta in the real world, but they really were able to capture the essence of like the anime and the sh everything in the face sculpt as well. So it's not like and, and this is the uh, the second head skull. So like, I don't like it as much. Like honestly, going back, granted, this picture isn't as good. It was a little out of focus, but I mean, I, I, to me, there's really no comparison. And like me, like a lot of other people, though, we, when they started showing, when they announced that they were going to make a second head, that was an optional for purchase. That they, you know, kind of wrung the hair in a little bit and tried to make it a little bit more accurate to the show and everything i was happy about that because i too thought it was a little much at first now did you have to purchase that separately yeah it was 35 dollars for a second head so okay. it's not really that bad no i mean once you're spending like once you're spending 600 what's 35 dollars? Yeah, yeah you know what i mean like, i like so, the bigger hair personally i do too and that's the, the thing. details much better in the face as well yeah and that's exactly what i thought but people thought that like like, I don't know, like, if it was too expressive or it wasn't, like, accurate to, like, Vegeta or it was too big or something. I forget what a lot of people had, like, a lot of things to say about it. So, like, they, so they didn't have to make a second head. They could have just said, you know, fuck you guys. This is what we're doing. If you want yeah. it, we're, you're getting it. But. I mean, it's nice they give you the option. Yeah, I, I really like when, when the companies do do that, though. Like, because that's one thing, like, KD in particular, um. And other places do it too, but they really listen to like the fan feedback during the whole like pre production phase when they're showing like the three D models and everything and they listen to the feedback and they, they do make adjustments. Assuming they get enough feedback in time while they're before they've started casting these things, while they're still in the three D model phase, like they'll go in and they'll make alterations. Like if 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 they feel like it's something 
that they agree could be better, then they go in and they change it. And so here's a good shot of his how, how much more hair you can just tell. Well, the head itself is much bigger, it looks like. It is. It's a little bit. I like that it, scale, though. It looks better with the piece. Yeah. Like, I probably should have got another picture or two of it with it, it, the other head being inside of it. But, like, you could still tell by the other picture. Like, it doesn't look, to, it looks too small on the body. Like, like otherwise. And here is the, uh, I didn't notice I had this upside down. But this was the, uh. You saw it in the unboxing as well, but this is the COA for it. I have number 38, which is just a picture of the piece. And then here's the, uh, the COA from uh, the Dragon Ball Collectors United group that commissioned the LED version. That was a, You got a metal COA for that one. And it had their logo on the back. That's so, cool. It is cool. It has metal as well. But, and here is the LED light feature that's on cool. it. That's cool. So... That's that's all it does. There's no like blinking or sequential anything on it. There's no sound effects. There's no light in the base. It's just that. So, which is good. And and because I know a lot of people don't like having like crazy lighting effects on on the pieces. And then like a lot of people just have trouble plugging them in because like depending where your setup is, like you might not have a plug yeah. like close to you. So the fact that you're not missing much if you don't have the LED feature, I like. Because it, it lets you, some people make or break their purchases based on like an LED fit feature, because like if they can't use the LED feature and it's going to cost them more money because it exists, just it, then it's not worth it to them at that point. And it's, you know what I mean? And, and I, I understand that. So definitely understand that. But that's, I mean, that's pretty much it with it. I say... This is probably my second favorite piece, that Goku Black, uh, UK Studios Goku Black that I have, which, again, I said I have a uh, review up for that on the channel as well. That's probably my favorite one. Um, I do have another review of a, another KD Collectibles piece coming out uh, uh, soon. I'm going to start working on that very soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, before we go, though, Rick, as someone who doesn't actually collect these pieces, what are your general thoughts on... Uh, like just the quality and the build and everything of this piece. Oh, kind of like I said earlier, I mean, it's incredible. Just the amount of detail, the attention to detail, the like precision of the painting, the amount of thought that goes into even putting that much detail into a sculpt is like commendable to me. So um, I think it's awesome. You know, I'm, I've never really collected statues. I've got a couple cool like collector figures and like, uh, you know, Gogeta, like the Japanese model kits and stuff, but uh, it's nothing like that. <laughs> right no yeah that's the thing I said, you definitely get what you pay for honestly it's like i mean i think most of us we probably start out collecting like six inch action figures yep. from like walmart and toys r us and things like that i mean it only kind of evolves into that right and like you you started doing like gundams and stuff more and like that gives you a little bit more control over how the final product oh my gosh but yeah you got to put a lot more work into assembling it and painting it and if you want to go that far with it so. which i've done and yeah it's a lot of work but it's rewarding at the end you know when you No, absolutely yeah it's it's great and like if, like i said if you're a fan of like dragon ball z stuff i would 100 percent recommend looking uh looking kd collectibles up because they have some incredible pieces um they are expensive but they have like a great uh they have like three Vegeta pieces. They have a Majin Vegeta one that looks amazing and just recently came out. Actually, I don't know if it's out yet, but it was one that they were most recently working on. They had a Future Trunks one they were working on. They have a Kid Boo statue. I mean, there's just a ton of these uh, figures out there. And if uh, if you're a premium format statue collector, I can't recommend KD Collectibles themselves enough just because the, the, the two pieces I have of theirs are just, they're, they're phenomenal in all honesty. Like, they, they are great. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that pretty much covers it. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't have anything else to really say about this other than the fact that I would like 10 out of 10 recommend it for anybody who is a, a Dragon Ball Z fan or just a statue collector or just anything along those lines. So go get it. If you can find one, I would definitely recommend it. I don't know how much it would be aftermarket like at this point in time right now, but if you could ever get your hands on one, I'd say it's probably going to be worth your worth worth spending whatever it is on it if you find it out that if, if you find it to be a reasonable price a reasonable price because i know that uh that kind of varies from person to person so yeah i mean especially anymore nowadays with uh 
with the current climate and some people are hurting for work i'm sure a lot of statue collectors are they're probably hurting right now because they haven't been able to get a lot of their pieces uh, that they probably really wanted so but yeah that'll do it uh like i said stay tuned for uh another statue i guess i'm gonna have a lot of statue reviews coming out soon because i have a ton so uh but the next one i'm gonna do i think will be my other kd collectibles piece just keep it in theme here and then uh, stay tuned for more. Check out Honest and Uneducated. We do a live show every Monday. Or not live show, but we do a we do a show that comes out every Monday talking about like movies, movie news, and comic books, and just all sorts of fun stuff like that. Uh, Rick, where can everybody find you online? That's going to be at Sir Rick Metz down uh, under my name there. Sir, R-I-K-M-E-T-Z. Follow me. All right. You can also you can follow me at, uh, at Sir Rob Bifo there. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for us, guys. Take care.